Hi hey guys, in this video, we're going to be painting the porch sitter with the little gnome with the Christmas tree. Um, to get started, I'm not sure if I'll already have this part done for you or not. So I figured I'd show you in the video in case, just as time permitting with like kits get ordered and what I have time to do. So this little section here is gonna be the chalkboard section. Um, I'll have it clearly labeled in your kit, the black opposed to the chalkboard paint. So here's my chalkboard paint. It'll be in a little tub just like the rest of the paints, but I'll probably like write CB or something like that on the lid. So you know that it's not just the regular black paint, it is the chalkboard paint. So if this isn't already done for you, you're just gonna take a bigger brush and A little bit of your chalkboard paint. I'll have this taped for you. I will do that much because I don't really know how else I would send tape for you to tape off your own. So that much will be done. And I'm just a very thin coat. You don't want big globs. I did press my edges really well, but you may want to have redone that. I should have told you that already, but you just want to make sure you're your tape is down nice nice and tight to help prevent leaks and it's not foolproof you will probably still get some leaks as will i not the end of the world and i am going with the green just nice long up and down strokes nice even i don't want big globbies so i just put a little on my brush at a time Okay, so we will let that dry. And in the middle of working on the gnome, we'll go back and do a second coat. It is important to know, you cannot write on this for at least 24 hours. And before you write on it, you're gonna take your chalk. I'll likely send a piece of chalk along too. But you're gonna take your chalk and run it so that it's going up and down, not like a straight line mark. And you're just gonna like dirty up the whole thing after the 24 hour dry time and then just wipe it down. It's like called priming. Otherwise, if you write on it where it's nice and perfectly new and clean, your chalk isn't gonna wanna wipe off easily. It's just the directions on the bottle. I'm just passing that along. I'll probably remind you again by the end of the video, who knows? All right, and I never did tell you. Usually I do this whole spiel about get your paints ready, get your board out. Obviously you need your board and you need your paints. Um, I think this is all the colors we'll need. I've got, it's called Venetian Red, Phthalo Green, Bright Red, Black, Mars Black, and Titanium White. I'm gonna start off by doing the beard. And I'm using this kind of small square brush and I'm gonna paint it white. But while I'm working, I also need to like flick uh, on the edge past the pencil line to create like fluffy hairs like a beard has. And it's important that you don't just do the smooth edge first and then go back in because you'll have a very distinct line where the first layer has dried. So just while you're filling in, get that fluffy as well. Just a little, a little bit here. Just gonna kind of fluff it. I'm gonna go right into the tree, no big deal. I just wanna make sure that edge is fluffy. And maybe a little down in here. Cause his beard is gonna come down there in that little gap. Probably won't show by the time I get the tree painted, but just in case, I wanna make sure I have that good and filled in. And I'm just gonna go around Get the whole beard area painted. Nice thin, even coat. You don't want big globs. And I do kind of do it like it would be hair. That helps 
put that texture in. Maybe not so much the first coat, but by the second coat, I really do kind of put that texture in. Right now, I'll just focus on getting an even coat. So I got one coat done. I might get a little fluffier over here. Then I'm gonna go back in and do a second once over. And I will be adding gray into this. So if it doesn't cover perfect, that's okay because when the gray is put on, you're not gonna be able to tell the difference anyway. Okay, that seems pretty good for now. 
Next, I'm going to add in some gray. Just a little, my paint is gooey, oozing. A little bit of black and with some white, I'll make a light to medium shade of gray. Make sure my hand isn't in the way, almost always is. And I'm just using the side of my brush so I get a thinner mark. Just gonna add in some gray dashes, like little, little hair marks. My gray could probably be a little darker. I'll do another little layer that's a little bit darker. And I don't worry about staying inside the lines. I actually recommend that you kind of overlap into different parts of him so that you don't have like areas right up next to it completely white. You want it to look like the hair is behind like the tree and under his arms and you know what I'm saying. All right, I'm gonna darken that a little more black into my gray pile. And I'll just add a few of these in right around the edge. And a few here and there. If you get too much, you don't like it, just add more white on top. I'll show you that too. It's kind of hard. I'm painting from the side. I can't really see it as a whole. Um, if you want to lighten up some areas, probably clean your brush, but I'm going to be lazy. Just take white, a really light gray. And you can just go over top, kind of tone down to any areas that you think maybe got a little too dark, too many, too close together. However you like it. You make it how you like it. It is yours. So I'm, oh, I should probably put a little, a little down on these hairs. I don't know if they're even gonna show, but. Okay, my beard is done. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and do my shoes because I want them filled in because after that, we're gonna do the tree. And I want them to, the tree to be able to overlap onto the shoes. I don't even have a paper towel. So I'm cleaning out my brush and I'm going to paint his little boots black. Just, I'm still using this medium kind of sized brush. I'm going to get his little, little boots filled in. Make sure you're getting that white pencil line covered. You don't want that showing. When you're all finished, you're painting will have a weird pencil line around the outside. That's not cool. I'll just take a little bit of white on my dirty brush. It can be over in your gray area, that's fine. And I'm gonna just kind of swoop that on and blend it. Kind of go through the tree a little. It's a little lighter than I'd like, so I'll just take a little bit more black starting at the bottom. Just kind of come up. I'm going to blow it dry just because I don't want to take forever waiting for it to dry because I want to get the his little highlights on there because again I'm afraid once I get the tree on it's going to be hard to put them in later so I'll just get them finished up. That should be good enough. Just uh, cleaning out my brush. 
I'm just gonna take a little bit of white. A little bit of white. I'm gonna use the same brush. And you see how it gets real thin? I don't know if you can see that. But I use it on the edge so that it makes a nice thin line. And I'm just gonna put a little swoop on the top of the boot. And I went right into the tree there because that will get covered, no big deal. So the shoes are done. Now I'm gonna get the tree. Get that tree done. Let's see. I wanna darken the green because right now it's this bright, bright green and that's not very pine tree looking as far as I'm concerned. So I've got you know, a little pile of green here. I'm gonna take a scoop of black, stir that in. A little more green. So now, if you look on the side of your plate, it's definitely darker. And then I need a little scoop of white. Stir that in. And that's just gonna help it show up. We've got this nice Christmassy tree green color. And we're gonna work on the tree just kind of like we did the beard. We wanna make sure the edges get flicked out so it's fluffy and not just this triangle shape. I mean, if you wanted to stay that triangle shape, feel free. It's pretty cute like that. But I'm gonna make it look more realistic. I'm gonna start with the triangle shape at the point. And then I'm just gonna kind of flick outward on both sides. And this is gonna take a couple coats. And I'm just getting a, since I made it a triangle, you can flick out the same amount on all the sides because it's already tapering outward. I guess that's not really what taper means, but. It's already gradually getting bigger, so you don't have to worry about making your strokes longer. And this inside area, I'm just gonna fill in green to start. When we add and layer on the different colors, then we'll have to be more particular with our brush strokes. But for now, we just need to get that base coat in. You can see I went on the glove, that's fine. I just wanna make sure I get some tree flicks to the side there, cause it would, it would be poking out. You'd be able to see that. go right on the shoes. Got a very rough spot on my board here. It's knotty. The paint doesn't like it. And on the bottom, also gonna kind of flick it out. Kind of downward, more towards the middle. So my angle is this way, get to the middle, it's more up and down, and then my angle will start going the other way on this side. So it's nice and floofy. I'm just gonna go back in and do a second coat, especially where it overlaps onto the beard, that white shows through a lot easier than the, just the bare wood. But again, we are gonna layer on lighter colors and that really, pretty sure isn't gonna cause an issue. Should cover right up. Get, a, get that white covered that I put in there to start with the beard. 
This is gonna look weird if there's that little bit sticking out. So I'm just gonna make sure it's covered by tree. Okay, first coat, second coat, looks pretty good. I'm gonna give it a quick blow dry. Bear with me. I got all my cords all tangled up here. Hopefully I don't. Sorry, should have had this set up better. All right, I think I'm good. more white to it cleaning out my brush just because it's getting pretty full and if your brush is cleaned out not holding out any paint you can get this nice thin thin line otherwise it's full of paint the bristles push out and you get you can't get a thin line it's all fat so another nice scoop of white into my green you can see that's lightened up quite a bit. And now this is where the brush strokes get, you know, more important. Instead of just filling in solid, we're gonna create like um, layers. So I'm just right on top. So my angle of my brush, I'm going kind of up this way. And as I come down, my brush is more straight through the middle and then I angle the other direction. And I'm just gonna keep going at it until I'm all filled. And it's okay if you go over his little arm, that'll cover. I'm gonna come right up into the arm so the end comes out where it makes sense. I don't want to move it because I don't want to get you on a center, but I probably have a weird spot there because my easel's in the way. So I'm going to put a little bit more on the end here. So there's my first layer of a little bit lighter green. And then I'm going to do it one more, one more round. Add more white into some of my light green. And I'm going to add a few more of these. But you see how I still left a lot of that original dark green showing? I'm gonna do the same. I'm not gonna fill in as full this time. I'm just gonna fill in a few so that I can see all the colors I've used so far on the tree kind of coming through. pretty good to me. I like it. All right, we might as well do the little trunk, finish up the tree since we're over there. Um, we need to just make a nice dark brown. To make dark brown, we mix the orange and the black. So this Venetian red, take a scoop of that, 
Take a scoop of black, about the same of both. Stir it together till it turns a nice dark brown. And you're just gonna fill in that little tree trunk. I'm probably gonna have to layer a little green back on top. Honestly, probably should have painted the trunk first to avoid having to go back in. But it's easy enough to redo. There's a little trunk. I'm gonna add just a little bit of white, dirty brush. So I have this lighter shade. And I'm just gonna brush a little bit lighter shade on one edge, the upper side. So we got a little bit of a highlight on the top there. Now I gotta go back in. I don't really have much darker green, but I'll just take a little bit of my other green just so that the branches kind of cover my trunk and it doesn't look like it's not within the tree. All better. All right, now we're gonna tackle the hat. We're gonna let this dry and go back, do those gloves. Don't really know what color to do the gloves. Red, black, I don't know, we'll figure it out when we're there. Okay, so the hat. We're gonna do stripes to start. We're gonna kind of pretend like there's not a checker pattern. We're just gonna look at it as this big, long, up and down, vertical stripes. I should get my little tree for reference. So I painted this, this little canvas I had, cause it had something else on it. And I just wanted to practice doing the buffalo plaid. So I just wanted to grab that so I could you know, jog my memory. So first step, we're going to do this stripe. We're gonna have to do it pink first because if we just paint red on the wood, it doesn't cover very well, so I'll show you. You can see the grain right through it. I mean, you can see the color, but I don't like that I can see the wood grain. So to fix that, we take a scoop of white in with our red and then the white blocks out the wood. And then when we get all the red on or the pink on and it's dry, we'll just go right over top of it with red. So I'm gonna paint this whole stripe. It's gonna go, go if you can't really see, I got glare. So this whole stripe goes right to there, all the way down. So I'm gonna paint that whole top I'll skip this one and then paint this other one. Make sure you get that outside edge covered where the pencil line is. Just take your time. You want nice, thin, even paint. You don't want globs. If you need to go back in and do a second coat, feel free. You're at home. You can take all the time in the world.
we've got that first stripe done and it ends right there and I'm gonna skip this one and I'm gonna do this one the one's kind of right over top of his nose I'm gonna kind of touch up this little spot that looks a little dark. Anywhere it looks a little dark, just go back in with a little bit more of your pink because it's still it's gonna look dark under your red too. There, like that. Pink space, pink space. Now we're gonna do the kind of murky red color, and this one we're not gonna add any white to this will show up just fine and be the bright color because we're going to be adding black into it so you're going to do a little black and with quite a bit of red don't get any white in there don't get that pink stirred in oh maybe i went and got a little bit of white in there oh well So something like that. So it's dark, but I might need more red in that. I don't know. Let's try more red. Because it's going to look even darker on the wood. So kind of this burgundy shade. And you're going to paint this stripe and this stripe. So still the long, long stripes.
and then this one. Now my pink is dry, I'm going to go ahead and paint that red. Get that taken care of. So just clean brush. Let me find some paint that's not all tainted here. I've got my red. And I'm just going to go right over top. Probably going to take two coats. Just so we're looking a little pink. I want it to be nice bright red. You do get a little sloppy. It's all right because that dark red color hides it really well. It doesn't really show up when you kind of overlap onto the other edge, which is kind of nice. You don't have to be too fussy.
Now I'm just gonna go back to my first drape, give that another quick, quick coat. Oops, sorry. And get that nice and red. Second coat will go a lot faster. Got green in my got green in my red. Better get fresh squirt. There we go. A couple spots that weren't dry really well so i'm gonna blow them dry and then i can paint them red and they won't look pink anymore I've got the first round done. So the next bit I'm going to be painting, I'm going to be painting horizontal stripe. I'm going to skip the first one and I'm going to paint this one. Really, you don't have to paint the full stripe, but it's just easier if you think that way to keep it straight in your head. So I'm going to skip this one paint this one and I'm going to use this burgundy color, the dark red. So really I only need to paint this little square and this little square, but it's easier to me if I just am like, okay, it's, it's a stripe. And then the other one gets another, gets another coat too. Doesn't really need another coat because where the overlaps, it'll make sense to you here in a second. I'll explain. So where the burgundy stripes overlap, they're gonna be painted black, those little, those squares. So if you can envision it, this isn't dry all the way, so it's being a pain in my ass. Let that dry. So this one would be black, but we're gonna do the stripe first, then go back in and do the overlap. I'm gonna dry this. this one. 
I'm doing this one. So don't worry if that one is looking, um, so the one that we painted first is going to look a little darker because it's on the wood and not on the red that you're painting right now, but that's going to be painted black. So that because even if they don't match right now, it doesn't matter. It's not going to be against it. So that will be black. That will be black. Skip this. This one, do this one. This one, do this one. Where's that one's line? That's glare. I think it's a gray in here. So it comes down. Boom. It's so skinny. It's gonna be down there. And I got this whole section here is going to be this color. Don't worry, we'll alternate down here when we get the black out. Right now, it looks like the whole bottom of this hat is going to be burgundy, but it won't be. Okay, now we can go in with the black and do all the little squares where the burgundy stripes intersect. Get my brush cleaned off, dried off, and I'm good to go. A little bit of black. Do this one here. Just take your time. Nice, thin paint. Don't need a lot on your brush at a time. Always go back for more. Help prevent globbies. Get that white pencil. It's showing a little bit through the burgundy. So make sure you get that covered. Should I turn the heat on? I am freezing. I hate hearing it though, it's so loud.
she just started to get to the end maybe. Cause on my hand, I wanna rest my hand and get a wet paint. Tiniest little piece here. She probably eats the brushes, but I think you got time for that. Um, this one. And I'm going to skip that one, paint that one black. There isn't a line there, but I'm going to make the very tip black also. I'm going to just freehand in because I think the end needs to be black. It looks better. There. We did it. Hat complete for the most part. Got, we'll have some highlighty stuff to throw in there, but. Majority is done. Now I'm gonna do his arm. Still really haven't decided what color. Red, black. I think I'm just gonna do black. Cause we got a tree there. We don't need a lot going on. We already have a whole tree. So I'm just gonna paint his little, little paws, little army black. And if I decide I want to do stripes or something, I can make that decision after I get them filled in black. We'll see what it looks like. Now, if you wanted to do yours red, feel free. Just remember you have to paint pink first. Just to get good coverage, let it dry, and then paint red. See where his thumb is, but I think it's right here. I think his arms need something. We're gonna have to do stripes. I think we'll do little red stripes. We'll paint them white first when this is dry. 
and then we can paint them red. Maybe the burgundy. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. We'll see. While those are drying, actually, before they're dry, I'm gonna just take a little white on my dirty brush, kind of make this gray. I'm just gonna get that blended around the front of the mitten. A little down the sides and around the edges, just kind of blended through. It's real subtle. It's a very dark gray. And if it's too light, just take some black right on top, blend it out, and it'll look, it'll look better. See, too much. And as it dries, it does get darker. While that's drying, I'm gonna go and do the nose. Actually, while that's drying, let's do the second coat on our chalkboard. That way that's nice and dry when we're all done and we can pull the tape and it looks nice. Got my chalkboard paint. Make sure your brush that you're gonna be putting the paint on with up here is as dry as you can get it with a towel. You don't have, it doesn't have to be like bone dry, but you don't want extra moisture in it. So just a little bit of your black paint, the chalkboard paint, not the regular black, chalkboard. Just one more quick, once over, smooth even. And again, I just go nice long strokes with the green, right to the right over onto the blue tape. And just smoothing it out so it's nice, minimal brush strokes. Make sure you blend your brush all the way top to bottom and you don't pick up and put down in the middle somewhere because that's just adding more brush strokes in. You want them smooth all the way top to bottom. So that is done, leave that alone. And I'm gonna do the nose. Just getting that chalkboard paintbrush cleaned off and I'm gonna put it out of the way. I don't want it just hanging out in my jar. Okay, so the color of the nose is gonna be the Venetian red, that burnt orange color with quite a bit of white. So I'm gonna find some white that doesn't have a bunch of colors in it. A little red there. Okay, so I've got some white and a little, whoop, little scoop of orange. So I kind of make this fleshy, fleshy tone. And that's the color of the nose. This will likely need two coats. And I overlap right on to the hat a little, right onto the beard, just so I don't have any gaps, no wood showing. Make your nose a little bigger if you need to. Okay, there's that. Well, that's drying. I'm gonna go up into the hat and add in some, let's see. Let's start with the black. Add in some creases and folds. Some little sketchy lines, a little bit of outlining. So just quick, quick little outlines. Not solid, just some sketchy, 
sticky lines. And I use the side of the brush so I can make a thinner mark. If you are more comfortable with a smaller brush, use a smaller brush. Right in here where it's kind of folded, I'm gonna put in some wrinkles and it's just like little, little bit of lines. Maybe a little wrinkle in here, just whatever. Maybe sketching a little bit more, kind of going this way. And this will help if you've got some messy edges. This will help kind of clean that up, bring the eye forward onto the sketchy line. Just wherever. I'm gonna do the same idea now with white. Oh, I just stuck. <laughs> I just stuck. I didn't put the lid back on my chalkboard paint, and I just stuck this in there, thinking it was my jar of water. So let me get that cleaned off. Guess I better put the lid back on that. What a mess. Find a new towel. I put it in there. I was like, wait, that feels thick. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let me get that off. Okay. Now I'm going to use some white. I'm going to find a spot that's kind of clean. And the same idea. I'm just going to put in a little sketchy quick outline and then in between on the different stripes Not like on every one, it's kind of random. About like that. A little, a little neater on this edge. And I can go back to the nose. I'm gonna lighten my peachy color, take a little bit of it, just stir it in with some more white. Since it's on my brush already, that's pretty easy. In second coat, I'll just kind of brush on. I'm gonna go back to the darker color and blend that in. Cause that he looks a little pale. Now I'll just take a little bit of white and swoop across the nose for a highlight. Now I'm gonna get to the towels. I was covered in chalkboard paint. So just a little bit of white, make sure it's clean. I'm gonna swoop across the nose. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of this orange that's got the little white from my brush on it and get a little shadow under the nose. And if I want stripes on my eye, I could need something. If I just add the highlights, that might be cute. And I think I'm gonna leave them alone. I think stripes will be too much. I'm gonna use my smaller brush, a little bit of white, a little white paint, just plain white. And I'm gonna come down on the under, leaving a little space, swoop up, same on the other side. 
I don't need much space on that one, but you get what you get. A little house group here. Um, I don't know. I'm not loving the emittance. Let me add the highlights to the trees. Maybe that'll help me. I'm gonna go back to my bigger, it's kind of medium size, so it's bigger than that small one. And I'm gonna put some white in the tree using the side, side of my brush, just like we did when we were putting all the, like the needle texture in. I'm just gonna kind of brush in a few white ones. So if I, I feel like if I did more to the mittens, it'd be too busy because we got all of that's going on with the tree. And if I put stripes on them, I just I think it's too much. I think that's cute. Pretty cute. Let me step back and look. I like that. Um, I think we're done. I'm gonna pull this tape and then explain again about the chalk because I don't want you to mess it up. It's just important that you prime it with, with the chalk, use the side of the chalk and just scribble all over it. Take a towel, paper towel, smush it all around so it's all dusty, and then you can wipe it clean. Just water, you don't wash it. And then it's ready to draw on. But again, make sure that it has set at least 24 hours before you write on it. That's just what the directions say. You're probably safe after, you know, five or six, but don't want you ruining it by not following the directions. So I just want to pass it along to you. I think that's really cute. And then I'm going to have it say, which you will have already seen in the picture, but I'm going to have like, you can, cause it's chalkboard. You could do a countdown, like 25 days till Christmas right on there. And you can write with chalk that way. You don't have to make it perfect the first time. You can erase it and write it how you like it. You have as many tries as you want to get it right. So yeah, I think that's really cute. And if you did want to do something else with the mittens, because I'm still not convinced I love the mittens. Um, if you wanted to stripe them, whatever color, make sure you use white first. Stripe them with white. Let the white dry. And then you can either use the bright red or this burnt red. Or maybe just white stripes. Or maybe just put a... A line there and give them a little mitten a different color mitten doesn't have to be stripes so yeah up to you do what you like it's yours it's gonna be in your home on your porch whatever you decide to do with it hope you enjoyed the video hope your gnome turned out super cute and yeah thanks I'll see you in the next one maybe